brings us to items 17 and 18, which will be presented together. And this is on the Scottsdale Museum of the West, the management agreement. Of course, the Scottsdale and 18 being the Scottsdale Museum of the West pre-construction services contract. Mr. Millar, as I make the presentation for staffs. Uh, th thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. Rob Millar, Economic Development. This item before you is a request to adopt Resolution 9307, authorizing a management agreement with Scottsdale Museum of the West, and as well as Ordinance Number 4071, which will waive certain financial policies and provide governing guidance related to the municipal financing of the uh, municipal or the uh, museum. In terms of uh, what we want to cover with you tonight, I want to provide with you a little bit of a context of the history of the Western Museum and how we got this item before you tonight. We also want to uh, introduce and allow uh, Bob uh, Brias to come up from Consult Econ. Uh, I'll talk about a competitive process that we went through to request uh, uh, qualifications for a museum manager. So we uh, encourage the, um, uh, the consultant to come into town and provide you with their analysis of the existing market potential and the operating plans that were provided during that competitive process. We'll go through the management agreement as well as the uh, funding plan the city treasurer will go over with you. We also have uh, Mr. Jim Bruner here this evening who's asked for a few minutes to go before the city council after staff has finished their presentation, make a few comments. All right, that's fine. I keep going the wrong way, I'm sorry. Um, th this first slide in terms of the background starts with October 2nd, uh, 2012, and, and it, it's, that's not a fair uh, uh, representation of the history, and that's not when this item first came to the City Council. This item literally has been 30 years in the making. Um, uh, 30 years ago, members of, of the community got together, leaders in the community, and, and started talking about and crafting a vision. Uh, and that vision was that we are a community built on Western heritage, yet we don't have <clears throat> a Western museum. A Western museum to protect and promote our Western heritage, not just for tourists, but also for residents. Uh, there's probably many of us in this room have been uh, contacted by people from out of town to say, where can I go and experience this Western heritage that I've heard so much about? So these leaders got together in, in over the 30-year period, um, really honed this vision and, and, and got more involved and contacted and worked with the city councils over the years. Um, the most recent effort came to the city council on October 2nd, 2012. Um, at a work study session, the city staff brought to you uh, the um, 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 results of a request for qualification process for a manager for a Western Museum. Um, we provided to you the statement of qualifications. Uh, Scottsdale Museum of the West was the only respondent to that request for qualification um, process. In their statement of qualifications, they had identified a 40,000 square foot museum that includes a sculpture garden and a in the Loloma Transit Center, which I'll show you on a map here in a second. They had estimated $12 million in development costs, which includes the capital and tenant improvements, and $1.2 million in um, operating. Um, just to uh, provide you context of the site, the aerial here, the, the expansion parcel and the cultural parcels at top is where we are contemplating the shell of the Western Museum. To the south is the transit parcel uh, that is uh, on site. The buildings would be uh, repurposed for museum use. In between the transit parcel and the cultural parcel, you'd see uh, a grassy area, a sculpture garden, um, and uh, locations for uh, um, uh, uh, children who come in and want to get an educational experience or maybe some Western reenactments would occur in that area. The center parcel on the western side is a, a community youth theater, and that is not a part of this um, uh, museum project. So council provided the staff with a direction at the work study session, and that was to develop financial plan scenarios for capital and TI costs. They directed staff to extend the 10% allocation of the city's portion of the tourism development program funds as long-term debt support to begin a development of a city uh, design build solicitation for the construction of that museum and to initiate the development of an operating agreement. Those two latter um, uh, directions are contingent upon city council approval, and the council was clear on that. These need to come back to council for review and approval. There was something else that the council talked about. Uh, in, in, in addition to the direction that they provided us, we heard the council uh, share uh, interest in that staff would go out and, and test some of the assumptions that were provided to the city through that, that request for qualification process. Um, and, and, and those assumptions are uh, those things that were provided in terms of projected annual tenants operating costs, 
uh, earn your received revenue, endowment, and staffing levels. And the, and the council really wanted to, us to, to come back to you and provide you with some sort of analysis. We, um, we, we, we acknowledge that that's a, an expertise that the city staff does not have, but we also wanted to provide you with that third-party independent analysis. So we contracted you with Consult Econ, uh, who is uh, located out of Boston, um, and provided them with the statement of qualifications, provided them with the AMS study, that you may remember was done in 2006 on the feasibility of a Western Museum in the city of Scottsdale. And we asked them to test the, the assumptions in the, uh, the operating plans, look at the market conditions, and also do significant benchmarking around the country and come back to us and tell us how that compares with the request for qualification process and the statements that we received. Um, I'd like to bring up Bob now from Consult Econ, who will walk you through their, their analysis, the process they went through, and the assumptions that they made and the recommendations that they're going to make. Mayor Lane, council members, thank you for the opportunity to present this material. This slide presents uh, some of our qualifications uh, for this work and also reviews the uh, analyses and uh, uh, outcomes that we came out of our analysis. We looked at existing data and the plans that had been done in the past. Uh, we uh, reviewed resident and tourist markets and looked to not only to the national comparables, but to the experience of uh, museums and cultural institutions in the Phoenix area. We conferred with the, the Scottsdale Museum of the West leadership and with the Scott, City of Scottsdale project managers to uh, further our understanding of the plan. We reviewed the site and uh, and the market context. Our analysis was made within um, the under, trying to understand the plan that was put forward and, our, and the analysis really reflected the intent of the, pro, of the project proponents. Based on that, we prepared attendance scenarios, operating assumptions, and preliminary performance as was reviewed. The Scottsdale Museum of the West has large markets that it can draw from. These include the resident markets, both here in Scottsdale and throughout the metro area. And this is a large metro area with good uh, growth air, uh, potential and, and growth profile moving forward. The resident market was defined as Maricopa and uh, Pinal counties. The tourist market is, uh, is Scottsdale and the Paradise Valley. There are large numbers of day visitors from throughout the area, as well as hotel visitors, about 1.1 million. And in addition, we uh, made estimates of the number of visiting friends and relatives. So there really are large uh, numbers of potential visitors to the museum. This slide shows the attendance profile. And this reflects the early initial uh, market excitement, and that's that first uh, year where there's the higher, then, it's, then it shows it going down. And what that is, is normally when there's a new museum, there's a spike in attendance early before you move towards uh, stabilized attendance. In this case, the operating plan is to build the capacity of the organization to increase marketing programs and, and a number of uh, personnel and to really ramp up the organization to to fulfill the uh, um, capacity of the building and the exhibits. So here you have that initial uh, market excitement, and then you build towards the darker bar, which is stabilized attendance that we're estimating to be about 103,000. And then it would you know, move just uh, uh, forward over time. The attendance range of 87 to 118,000 that we've estimated really reflects the range in usage of the assets in, and, the, uh, uh, and the collections and, and really how the museum is operated. So that part of the range is how, you know, what occurs there and part of the range just represents the, you know, the uh, understanding that estimates are estimates and that, that you might be somewhat higher or somewhat lower than the best estimate which in this case is 103,000. 
The next slide uh, shows the seasonality, which is pretty typical for uh, Scottsdale, and it reflects both a resident market usage of this facility and a tourism market use. Some of the important um, assumptions that were used in the analysis were uh, the ticket prices. So obviously ticket prices affect the attendance patterns. $11 adult and $7.50 in current dollar value. We also look at, at um, student usage, memberships, family memberships, and facility rentals as, as part and parcel of the use of the facility. The pie chart does break out the attendance by percentages. This slide um, breaks out the stable year um, uh, uh, operating budget. And, uh, the, you know, as we had earlier seen with the, um, the attendance going up over time, absent the early uh, surge in attendance, so too would the operating budget under this proposed plan by the Scottsdale Museum of the West to move up from about 2.3 million to 2.77 million in years to one to five, and that the personnel that we think are appropriate for this facility as it is uh, currently uh, put forward would be about 22 uh, full-time equivalent positions to 29.5 full-time equivalent positions. The, the makeup of that would be about 15 full-time and 14 part-time initially and moving to 21 full-time to 17 part-time moving forward. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a baseline of operations and it is, it is pretty reasonable to expect that uh, there, would be, there would be attempts to Im improve on uh, all of these factors, both the attendance and the, and the uh, operating budget to provide more uh, benefits to um, the, you know, the cultural life of the city and to the economic benefits of the project. To uh, support that operating profile, um, as we had noted, there is a, there is a uh, ramp up of attendance and the, um, the, the the operating revenues would grow um, over time, but that there would, in, there would also be a need to increase supportive revenues over time as well. And uh, this museum in its, in its stable year would earn about 45% of the total revenues required to support it, and the other portion would be uh, contributed revenues from different sources. That, those percentages are fairly typical of museums nationally. And, and indeed, many museums have lower ratios. So evaluations of this type typically try to get to, and I think that these numbers get to what is a baseline of operations and what it would require to operate the museum from a baseline perspective with the understanding that actually you would want to raise more uh, um, you have higher fundraising levels so that you could operate uh, the museum, you know, in a um, more beneficial way, again, in meeting its mission and, and providing benefits to the city. The plan um, was informed, this, this profile and the, um, the Scottsdale Museum of the West plan was, inf was informed by their um, their understanding of their internal fundraising capacity. And so it did include uh, the, um, the, the component in, in the non-operating revenues of contributions by the city to their operating fund over time as they build up their own capacity to fundraise. This slide breaks out those, um, those revenues by type, and you can see that 42% non-operational, 26% ticket sales, memberships, retail sales, facility rentals, and so on and so forth, so that, that the 
operating revenues of about 1.5 million, earned revenues 1.26 million in various contributed and fundraising revenues to total to the 2.77 million total required to support the uh, the op the um, uh, operating budget as stated. And this slide uh, just shows the uh, summary of all that. It should be noted that uh, these numbers were informed uh, substantially by the benchmarking of uh, a number of Western museums, Western themed museums throughout the United States, and that the, this profile fits within that um, the, the benchmarking or profile of many of these other museums. They are both larger and smaller and have different breakouts in some of these categories of size, attendance, revenues, and so on and so forth, but that this fits within the experience of all of these and that the ratios and of earned revenues, non-earned revenues, and so on and so forth are within that, uh, that um, industry experience, museum industry experience. And with that, I'm, that completes this presentation. Thank you very much. So now we're going to uh, jump into the management agreement that you have in your packet. Um, and before we do that, um, Brian, could we switch over here? Do I have it the right way? If we can hold until after the public comment will be good. If you can hold on to that. Um, Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, last week you received an email from staff indicating that there was a small typographical error in the management agreement that you have in your packet. Um, what, we've, what we've done here is outlined the, the um, Paragraph 5 and 5.2, where there was basically a switch of, of, of a word um, and from manager to city. So we want to make sure you're aware of this tonight. And should you make a motion to approve the agreement, we would ask that the motion include the, the corrected language. And after the city council meeting, we would swap out that, those uh, sections, paragraph 5 and paragraph 5.2. The management agreement is, is divided into 17 sections, and it's just under about 50 pages. So it wouldn't be practical, practical to go through it in great detail right here. Um, uh, if we can get back to the screen, though. Um, what we'd like to do is cover the, the key points. And we've divided this into two areas. It's the manager's responsibility and the city of Scottsdale's responsibility. And this is a contract between the Scottsdale Museum of the West and the city of Scottsdale for the management of a city-owned museum. Um, in terms of the manager's responsibilities, we want them to participate in the museum design and construction. That's important for both the manager and for the city because they're going to be operating it. So they're going to be critical to being involved in those discussions. Uh, they're responsible for the exhibits. The, the contract calls out for shell work. Shell, for this case, is the actual museum. It also call, calls out uh, specialty work, which is improvements that the city is responsible for interior of the museum. And then there's exhibits, and this is the, the responsibility of the manager to go out and acquire or create the exhibit uh, artifacts and so forth for the museum. That is their responsibility. Also, it's their responsibility to fund those exhibits. And I uh, want to make sure I come back to that when we talk about the city of Scottsdale's responsibility in a second. Art collection, they're responsible for going out and acquiring the art uh, that will be owned by Scottsdale Museum of the West, but they're also responsible for going out and acquiring short and long-term loan collections. Naming rights, in the, in the agreement that we have before you, the name of the museum is Scottsdale's in terms of possessive uh, Museum of the West. Um, Scottsdale Museum of the West organization did focus groups, and they talked to the people, and they, they shared a variety of names, and they got very favorable response to people talking about, this is the city's museum. And so Scottsdale's Museum of the West is what's included in the management agreement. Any future naming rights that are contemplated either by the city or the museum um, uh, manager would need to come back to the city council for review and approval by the city council. The management operation, uh, we, we want them to be open a minimum of 300 days per year. Uh, we, and, and it's critical, too, that they're open during downtown events like our walk. It draws people down to that area of the downtown. So we've included that intentionally in the agreement that they need to be open on e evenings such as that. They need to have a gift shop operations, certainly comply with federal, state, and, and uh, local tax requirements. 
um, board membership. The contract is, is clear that we, the city would have a 15 percent uh, membership on the board. And this is, is, is intentional and it's important because since this is a city-owned facility and it's, it's community investment, we want to make sure that the city is at the table and is part of the decision making early on. And so that is uh, included in the agreement. The term of the agreement is 10 years with three 10 additional year extension options. Financial commitments, they obviously need to raise funds. That's with any operation, a museum operation, that's critical, but we were clear to point that out. They need to develop a program for a five-year matching donation program, which we'll talk in more detail about here in a second. Salaries, contractual services, and utility bills. And letter of credit. Uh, they are responsible within the first three years to, to come up with a $500,000 letter of credit that, that steps up uh, uh, year one, two, and three. And that letter of credit is a protection for the city. Should the city ever need to call in letter of credit for any operations or any kind of use, the city can call on that and use that as an insurance policy. I'm not going to go through the annual plan in, in, in detail here, but I want you just to be aware that in addition to having a city representation on the board, we also want to, to be a part of the process, know what the next 12 months looks like. And so we require the manager to provide to us uh, each year by October 1st an annual plan. And it really is uh, required to be detailed. We want to know exactly what's going to happen over the next 12 months. Um, and these are some of the elements that you see that are included in that. So we jump to City of Scottsdale responsibilities. Uh, the, the council direction in October was to initiate a, a, a competitive process for the uh, design build manager, which has been complete. Um, the, should the council approve the agreement and associated funding tonight, the very next item on your agenda is to award design contract services uh, for the museum. Um, the design and construction of the shell tenant and improvements of the specialty work are, are the city's responsibility. Um, and now I'm going to go back to the exhibit space, the, the exhibit responsibilities that I talked about before. The, the exhibit responsibility uh, in terms of raising the funds necessary to, to carry that out, again, is the manager's responsibility. The design phase of the, of the process is about six months. During that six-month process, we would anticipate having regular and frequent dialogue with the manager, not only about the design of the museum, but we need regular updates on how they're doing in their fundraising to, to, to carry out their responsibilities with the exhibit spaces. We would not anticipate coming back to council uh, requesting that you award a contract for construction until we have received uh, proof that at least 50 percent of the exhibit uh, fundraising has been secured by the manager. Uh, we are the developer, so we obviously go through the city planning and review process, and we'll resolve the ownership uh, issue that uh, um, um, is, is involved in the Loma Transit Center. You may recall that the Loma Transit Center was built in part with uh, federal, federal transit authority dollars. Um, when we abandoned that as a transit facility, the FTA said that they would accept that abandonment as long as we conveyed those federal transit dollars to another transit use within the city of Scottsdale. We have received approval to, to convey those transit rights to Thomas Road improvements uh, that are currently in the design phase. Construction should begin in November of this year, and that's about a six to seven month process. So uh, when we say resolve the Loma Transit Center, it's, it's underway. We have a commitment. It's just a formality at this point to go through that process. The payments of $400,000 annual to a matching funds program. Consult Econ talked about that need for that non-earned revenue. The annual um, amount is anywhere from uh, $750,000 to $1.2 million. Scottsdale Museum of the West has, has, has been consistent sharing with staff that this is a, a known uh, 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 issue with them, that they are responsible for obtaining it. They're confident in going out and raising that non-earned revenue. But working with the consultant and working with Scottsdale Museum of the West, we wanted to ensure this museum is a success. And we realized the first five years are the most critical in terms of the buildup and the operations. So what we have proposed for you is a matching grant program of $400,000 $400, per year just for the first five years. So it will be a $2 million commitment. And this really is the city's uh, uh, standing, standing arm in arm next to the Museum of the West saying, when you go out and ask people to make a grant to, to the museum, they can say that the city of Scottsdale is in support of the museum and is matching uh, in a certain parameter up to $400,000 per year. So that's, uh, the city treasurer will talk a little bit about um, that in detail and, and where that funding may come from. And I'm actually going to turn it over to the city treasurer who will walk you through some of the uh, funding plans.
Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, briefly going through some of the history, uh, and we won't spend a lot of time on it, but this is, uh, doesn't go through the whole 30-year history, just the last two years of actions. And frankly, I'm going to jump to October 2nd because that's when we had, as Rob indicated, the work study session that involved uh, most of you, and you gave us direction at that time. The direction you gave us was to come up with a funding plan or a funding scenario for the capital uh, part of this commitment. And you'll see in some of the slides that I'll go through, we went a bit beyond that because we also looked at the operating parameters of this uh, potential museum and tried to build in some protections for the city and for this investment at the same time. The um, The first thing I'm going to talk about is the involvement of money to build the facility, and that's the first bullet on this slide. Obviously, we would issue what are called MPC bonds, Municipal Property Corporation bonds. We would be issuing them probably in fiscal year 13-14 and fund an investment that has been estimated by our city staff working through the building parameters a building investment of $13.6 million. And this really covers both uh, the museum and a related uh, associated complementary uh, investment in what would be called the cultural plaza. And Rob alluded to some of that when he described the facility. It's um, the small amphitheater, the sculpture garden, and so on that is adjacent to, and as I said, as a complement to the uh, museum itself. It's important to, from our point of view in thinking about this, and we may persuade you as well that this is really more than just a museum project. It's a, in a sense a project and a fraction of another project it's a, because the two are, are distinct. There's also the requirement uh, by our financial policy number 37 that we have a Reserve anytime we issue MPC debt because MPC debt at the end of the day is a pledge of the city's excise tax revenues. Now, the funding for it may come from somewhere else, but from an investor's point of view, it's a pledge of the city's excise tax. And the investors also take some comfort, as do the rating agencies, that we set aside reserves when we issue this debt. And typically the reserve, or not typically, but by policy, the reserve is equal to one year's debt service. And you'll see in a moment uh, the analysis of how we come up with that debt service reserve of $1 million. So let me put up on the ELMO if I can have, um, Brian, if you can switch to the ELMO, I'm going to talk to a slide that I'll put up there for our discussion. Uh, because this is an analysis of how we come up with the reserve requirements as well as the funding requirements and then some things that we will need direction from you on. In particular, I would point out two columns on here, um, a debt service without uh, debt service reserve and then uh, what the debt service would be with the reserve. And obviously you can see the million dollars swinging in these two columns if we have it uh, in the right-hand column and if we don't have it. The annual debt service for the lesser amount is $900,000 a year. And with the debt service, it's $1 million, um, as I indicated before. If you choose to fund this debt service, and this is our best estimate of what 20-year debt would be at current prevailing interest rates, if you choose to invest or service this debt with bed tax funds, you will recall that back in October you set aside $600,000 of bed tax money to be associated with this project. And if you convinced yourself that the project was really a project and a half or a project and two thirds, um, then you could fund it with more than one slice of, of bed tax money. And I'm going to talk to the bed tax here in just a moment. But we will eventually need your direction on whether we're going to use tourism development funds to support the 900000 of debt service. And it will be based on your supporting, if you choose to do so, two complementary but distinct properties 
Or you could waive, and this is part of your package, you could waive Financial Policy 21A, and that's the policy that says you won't use more than $600,000 for any project for debt service per year. So that will be your choice um, if you bear with us through that analysis. And then we also are talking here in the second bullet of some options that we may have uh, for you to consider to support the debt service reserve, the million dollars that we need, or really it's one year's, of, one year's worth of debt service. You could direct that we take another $100,000 of bed tax capital support money for the next 20 years, and that's what gets you from the $900,000 of money required to a million dollars, $100,000 difference to fund the debt service reserve. Or alternatively, you could direct us to transfer $900,000 from the tourism development carryover monies, transfer it into the debt service reserve. Let me switch gears just a little bit and talk to a slide that's in your package that, uh, and now, Brian, I'm going to have you t take me back to the uh, slide package that was presented. We're going to scroll ahead to the slide that is the bed tax as it's currently constituted. This seems like a busy slide, but let me tell you what we're really displaying here. In the leftmost two columns, we're displaying the bed tax or it's really called the um, Special Revenue Fund for uh, Tourism Non-Marketing Initiatives. Because when we get bed tax in on the beginning of the year, we divide that bed tax half for marketing initiatives and half for non-marketing initiatives. The marketing initiatives are colored pink in this uh, two-column portrayal here. And at the moment, uh, according to your direction, we give those monies to the Convention Visitors Bureau, and they do the tourism marketing on the city's behalf. The other amount of a like amount comes to the city for your discretionary expenditure, not for marketing, but for tourism development. Additionally, this council made the decision last year to augment the city's portion by putting in there also the lease revenues that we enjoy from the Princess Hotel. So that's why the column for the city is higher than the column for the marketing initiative. It's higher simply by the amount of the uh, Princess Hotel lease revenues. But you also made a determination of how you were going to spend that money, and this is embedded in, uh, in code and in financial policy. You said you were going to spend at the bottom most uh, block of money, a million and a half dollars going to the city's general fund for a variety of um, tourism initiatives that occur there. The blue block is money that is dedicated to special events. It's $1.2 million per year, and it may or may not all be spent, but these are a whole variety of initiatives that you'll look at over a year's time. The yellow block, 500000 spent on research, uh, research reports on tourism and the state of tourism and what to do about it. The orange-colored block is a piece that we call it swing. It can be spent for either capital or for event initiatives in a given year, but it can never leverage long-term debt. It has to be it's only a one-year initiative each year, may or may not be spent. And then all the blocks above there are blocks that are designated for long-term debt support for tourism-related initiatives. And you can see we inherited one that has been around for years, uh, supporting the Westworld 80-acre uh, land purchase. By no means the total cost of the land purchase on debt service, but at least a small portion of contribution toward it. Two blocks that you... Uh, put into the uh, Tony Nelson Equestrian Center, judging in your mind that it was really two projects, not just one. And above that, uh, one and a half blocks that you put in the TPC uh, capital investment, again rationalizing that it was uh, not just one project, it was really a golf course on the one hand and clubhouse improvements on the other, so really a project and a half, if you will. And then the block above there, the 600000 that you reserved for this discussion tonight for the uh, Western Museum, if as and when it came to pass. 
The other two blocks on the left have not been designated or discussed uh, as a reservation in any respect. I would point out the uh, Tourism Development Commission, your citizen advisory group, they have designated one of those blocks that they would like reserved eventually for use for the Desert Discovery Center. But you all have not uh, had that discussion, nor have you made a determination to reserve any bed tax monies for that. And now, if you as well, switch with me to the right-hand block, which is next year's projection of where we'll be. And you can see that there's an additional small uh, $400,000 block added to the city's uh, portion of expendable monies. And that reflects two things. It reflects the growth we expect in the bed tax, or at least the city's share of that number, and a small $100,000 growth that we expect in the um, Princess Hotel lease revenues. And so, what we are suggesting to you on the slide that we discussed before, if you find yourself comfortable viewing this as a project and a half, uh, you can, um, and I lost the slide here um, uh, momentarily, so we'll see if we can get back there. Um, and uh, Brian, if you can turn on the marking thing here, then I'll try to mark for them what we're really talking about. 600000 is already set aside, but we could also, you could also direct that you're going to put three or $400,000 from the newly created block at the top of the um, scale there for next year and dedicate that to this project. As I said, you can... You can do that if it makes rational sense to you that you're talking about more than just a single project, that it is a museum and a complementary uh, sculpture garden, cultural center, a small amphitheater, and so on. Alternatively, uh, you can waive financial policy 21A, that is the restrictive policy that says, in no case will you dedicate more than $600,000 to a single project. Now I'm going to switch gears on you a little bit because, as I said, we went beyond talking about how to finance the investment, the $13.6 million and the $1 million of, of uh, debt service reserve. We took, uh, we took note of what the consultant had said, that the city should probably plan on putting some money into this uh, venture. We are cognizant of the sponsors of this program saying not to worry, we are taking that responsibility for ourselves. And so we sort of sort of tried to strike a middle ground here, and, and um, Rob alluded to that a moment ago. Now I'm going to switch to the Elmo again. And talk to you about what some of the um, operating discussions were that occurred amongst the staff and what the recommendation that's being brought to you tonight. Very briefly, you find two columns here at the top, one being the uh, revenue and expenses that were estimated and submitted by the Museum of the West folks in their submission. Broadly speaking, $1.6 million of revenues, $2 million of expenses, and a fundraising challenge of 400000 and on the right, you see the numbers uh, that were discussed by the consultant in their report and reviewed with you briefly tonight. And that is revenues of a million and a half, expense of 2.8, and perhaps a fundraising challenge of a million three. And so we, in a sense, took an average of that here in the middle of the page. And we said, let's assume that the requirement turns out to be a potential fundraising challenge requirement of $800,000. Let's assume that the sponsors of the project, the uh, Scottsdale Museum of the West organization, can raise 400000 And we tried to come up with a strategy uh, for the city's contribution of $400,000 as its uh, as its share in this enterprise, and it's really more than a share in the enterprise, it's really trying to protect the investment and make sure this investment works for the interest of the city and the sponsors and the citizens. Uh, Rob alluded to this $400,000, and uh, we will propose, and I'll discuss in a moment, how we would suggest that be 
provided, but it would be a maximum annual amount of $400,000. We are proposing that it would be for a period of five years. We are proposing that it would be in the form of grants equal to all donations received by the Scottsdale Museum of the West. And now I've added a little parenthetical here um, that we'll need your guidance on. The agreement you have in front of you, if you have read that, actually has a proviso in there that the, the city's grants would be limited to qualified donations of, in quotation marks there, over 5,000 and under 50,000. Uh, if you, uh, and, and none of the other materials refer to this, and so that's why you need to be aware of this and make a determination and provide guidance to us on what your preference is. If you want it somehow limited, that's the way it is presently limited in the agreement. If you want no limitation, money is money, then so instruct us. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But number two, we're suggesting that the funding uh, for this come from taking money from the carryover balances in the bed tax. Now, Brian, if I can have you switch once more back to the bed tax uh, allocation chart. Uh, we don't show on here what the carryover balance is. Last year, the unspent money, and I'm talking about uh, green blocks of money as well as some of the other colors in this chart, the monies that were not spent by the council, they simply accumulate and they roll to the following year. They're never incorporated in the general fund. They stay in this fund, but they roll to the following year until you make some use of them. Last year, you had almost $3 million that rolled forward, and you decided to take two of that and provide uh, operating support to the Tony Nelson Equestrian Center during its formative years of transition from what it, is, what it was last year to what we hope it will be next year. Two million dollars was taken, uh, operating support in their case for two years. <clears throat> and it's uh, what you've done for a project in a, in a sense in its formative stage. You did not do anything like that for the TPC, uh, theory being it's already an operating uh, entity and it's uh, on its feet, doesn't need any operating support. So what we're suggesting tonight is maybe for the museum, which is a de novo investment, uh, you would commit some uh, carryover monies. I told you you had three million last year and spent about two. That means you st had still the million dollars that came through as carryover money yet undesignated this year. Additionally, uh, many of these items uh, that, that are designated here as capital spending will not be spent this year, uh, some because no reserve has been made on them, in other cases because you haven't yet issued the debt. So there's almost $3 million of money that I would suspect between now and June 30 you will not have spent out of this year's bed tax allocation. So you will have at the end of this year perhaps upwards of $4 million of carryover money that will go into fiscal year 13-14. And so now let me summarize two comments that I've made if you've followed me all along. One, I made a suggestion that you may direct us to take 900000 of that carryover money and move it to the debt service reserve fund thereby avoiding the requirement of issuing that much debt uh, for the debt service reserve. And second, I made a suggestion that you may have us not move the money, but earmark $400,000 per year for five years, total of $2 million maximum that would be the operating support in the form of matching grants to the Western Museum. The first number I talked about, the 900000 you would move, is only temporary. It is a debt service reserve. When the debt is paid, the money moves back. But the other would be uh, potentially consumed in the matching grants. And again, you must address the question of uh, whether you want those matching grants to be limited in some way to uh, the range that's in the management agreement between five and 50000 or whether you want no limitation on those. 
Uh, I think that's all I have to share with you on the financing uh, scheme. Our intent, to summarize, was to try to come up with a financing scenario with for you that provided funding for both capital construction and operating support and did so in a way that uh, hopefully insulated the general fund from any economic impact, either capital or operating, of this investment. And that is all I have to say, unless you have some questions. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, there undoubtedly will be some questions, but we're going to hold them till after we have uh, – well, number one, I presume Mr. Bruner was going to speak uh, toward this. Is that right, Mr. Millard? Uh, he is, Mayor. Um, we have just one more item to cover with you. Okay. Um, and we want to let you know that this item did go to the uh, Tourism Development Commission on February 19th in terms of the, the agreement and the associated funding, and they did vote in favor of making a recommendation to City Council for approval. also went to the Economic Development Subcommittee on the 21st, and there uh, was a consensus to, to approve and to recommend this to the full City Council. That does conclude staff's presentation, but you're correct, uh, Mr. Jim Bruner is available for some comments. Thank you, Mr. Millar, and thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Bruner, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. For the record, my name is Jim Bruner. My wife and I have lived in Scottsdale for 43 years. I'm here to represent the Board of Directors at Museum of the West. There are going to be a number of speakers, not too many, but a number of speakers who have a strong interest in this are going to speak, and I'll let them indicate and tell their story. I'd like to make two comments very brief. Number one, we really want to thank the staff, the city staff, for the work they've done the last four or five months. They have certainly represented the people in the community well, which is their job, obviously, but they have also been very supportive of the issues that we think are very important for a successful operation. And number, number two, our board has reviewed in detail this management agreement you have before you tonight. We concur with it. We approve it. We're ready to stand willing and able to move ahead as quickly as we can. There are various component parts in it, not the least of which is significant fundraising, helping with the design, and designing the interior exhibits. We are prepared to do that. We are very excited about doing that. The only regret I might have tonight, I guess, Mayor and Council, is that a gentleman by the name of Herb Drinkwater, who sat on that podium for 24 years as City Council and Mayor, this was his idea to get, get started. And I'm just disappointed that he's not here to see what hopefully will be the fruits of his initial efforts and a lot of people since then. We sincerely would appreciate your support, and we'll stand ready for us answering questions later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bruner. We will we'll go to public comment on this, and we have, do have several. Um, We'll start with Wayne Acton. We will be followed by Mike Fox. Council, I have a Kleenex here. I'm not crying, but my nose is giving me fits, okay? <laughs> well, welcome, uh, Councilman. <laughs> uh, Wayne Ecton, 3801 North Goldwater Boulevard. Does this sound like music to your ears? How long, just how long have we waited for a well-thought-out, workable proposal to be in front of the City Council? Well, you heard what uh, Mr. Bruner said. How many times have the citizens, the Tourism Development Commission, the CVB, expressed the desperate need to memorialize our Western heritage and provide an attraction that will draw tourists and visitors from all over the world and even the residents in Scottsdale to downtown to a facility that will entertain and educate families. I'm talking about adults and children. It's not limited. I compliment everyone that has worked diligently on the project. 
and providing a proposal that can make it possible to build and operate this facility. I am well aware of the time and the effort that the Museum of the West Board of Trustees, the architect, the construction engineering, the city staff, and the current and past city councils have put in and devoted to this, era, this effort. All of the ideas that have been considered, I'll rephrase that, of all of the ideas that have been considered for downtown, the Scottsdale Museum of the West offers a quality facility at an affordable cost that addresses a need that will enhance the valley, the vitality of the future. My wife and I are homeowners in the Gateway at Main Street Plata, Plaza, which will be the closest residential neighborhood to where the museum will be built. I am the president of that HOA. I'm speaking tonight, though, as a homeowner at Main Street Plaza. I'm not representing the board. I'm speaking for the majority, however, of the Gateway at Main Street Plaza homeowners who really support and look forward to being able to benefit from this operation. Please approve the management agreement and the pre-construction contract. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Ecton. Next is uh, Mr. Fox, be followed by uh, Richard Hazlett. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. You have just met our nighttime uh, watchman uh, in Wayne and our, I'm sure, our uh, sidewalk architect as we go forward with every hope. But s sincerely and seriously, um, the inspiring core values of Western culture that have distinguished the region over its history and through its bold and colorful transformations are integrity, perseverance, optimism, courage, and creativity. Not surprisingly, they have been the very characteristics that have been the hallmark of the Scottsdale Museum of the West discovery processes over the course of these past several decades. About 10,950 days, I think is what it amounts to, involving an extraordinary, the dedicated group of trustees of 14, and other community leaders, certainly, and our city staff. These admired values will become, as well, the very foundation of our organization's storytelling within the dyma dynamic mix of innovative and immersive and engaging visitor experiences in your Scottsdale's Museum of the West. Tonight, your positive vote for the museum's development will be a resounding and exemplary expression of your enthusiastic resolute commitment to extend new frontiers with these same great themes of the West as have other thoughtful, inspiring, and courageous leaders of the region whom have come before us. Your destination museum, as an anchor to the Historic Arts District, will make a significant contribution to the vitality of the district and of the city. It will be recognized as truly a state-of-the-art institution for which it will be cause for our community to experience the greatest, the greatest of pride, the greatest of engagement, and the greatest of enlightenment from the experiences which we intend to present within the museum. I am reminded of what a mentor of mine, a former Cherokee tribal chairwoman, the first chairwoman of any tribe in North America, Wilma Mankiller, shared with me about 30 years ago when actually then Mayor Drinkwater talked to me about even this project. She said Native Americans believe that the definition of a true and most responsible leader is one who makes every decision based on the potential impact on that decision on the seventh generation out. Most certainly, with what we hope to be your unanimous vote of support, this community-based project will indeed serve present generations, as well as at least three and likely many more generations of future residents and visitors who are not yet on Mother Earth today. I thank you 
I thank the conscientious and dedicated professional staff, the design build group with whom we have been working, LG, Core, and Studio Ma, Ganymede Design Group, downtown merchants, artists, collectors, donors, and scores of other people of our community and elsewhere for proudly, generously, and passionately wishing to support in the Westmost Western Town what will be soon the home of the Westmost Western Museum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Take Hayslip and then uh, Ned O'Hearn. Good evening, Mayor Lane and uh, members of the City Council. My name is Richard Hayslip. I have lived in Scottsdale five years less than Mr. Bruner, 38 years. I currently reside uh, at uh, 17416 North 77th Way. Um, as some of you know, I am uh, privileged to be serving as the interim director of Scottsdale's Public Art Program, which is a part of the Scottsdale Cultural Council. And it's on behalf of the Scottsdale Cultural Council uh, that I'm here this evening. And my purpose here this evening is to express our support for these uh, actions that are proposed and for going forward uh, with the Museum of the West. We believe that this museum, with its very uh, exciting and ambitious vision, along with its mission, which is so compatible with how we perceive our city and our city's history, that it is uh, bound to be uh, a real asset to our community. We think that it will strengthen the community of cultural and arts uh, organizations and businesses in that area and really enhance downtown and all of Scottsdale as a place to visit, a place to live, and a place to shop. We look forward at the Cultural Council to collaborating with the Museum of the West. We think there will be great opportunities and we're hopeful for a long and, um, and productive working relationship with the museum. We also would like to offer, particularly in the early years when the museum is getting off the ground, any support that the Cultural Council can provide uh, in the area of infrastructure uh, and technical support uh, and logistics. So uh, we hope that we'll be able to work with you in the, in the early days. So in conclusion, again, I want to encourage you uh, to approve these actions. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that Mr. Bruner and Mr. Carrots, both of whom are here tonight, were very instrumental in the creation of the Cultural Council. So it takes leaders in our community, and this is a great example of perseverance and leadership that you see here this evening. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayslip. Former Councilman Ned O'Hearn. Good evening, Mayor Wayne and members of the City Council. For the record, my name is Ned O'Hearn. I live at 8926 East Carroll Way. I'm actually not up here tonight to make points. Uh, I actually just want to be on the record uh, because I think tonight could be a very momentous night, not only for the city of Scottsdale, but for our downtown. And I just want to be on the record as being here. I'm not trying to be presumptuous. I'm very hopeful that the decision will go our way. I also want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank you as well as former Councilman McCullough for your perseverance, for your advice, and for your assistance. Now, this has been a long road. It goes back to before the recession, and we easily could have given up. You could have given up. We could have given up. But collectively, we did not give up. And for that, I want to thank you. And I want to thank, again, uh, the members of the staff. I don't want this to turn this into an Academy Awards, so I'm not going to try and name anyone, because I would definitely leave somebody out. But uh, they have persevered with us. They have offered us great advice. And we have a better product today than we would have had uh, without them. And, and they've been very, very helpful. I wanted to point that out. Mary Lane, when, when you addressed the town hall the other day, uh, you talked about graceful growth as your objective for the city of Scottsdale. Growth can take a number of uh, different paths. It could be population growth. It can also be growth of our treasury. And I don't think that there's a more graceful growth for our downtown sales tax benefits uh, than this museum compared to some entertainment venues and other things. This is a graceful project which will really enhance our downtown. Uh, I would also like to recognize uh, our executive director. We have a staff too. But it's not a staff in the same sense that we've been talking about uh, these people here. I'm talking about a walking stick. Uh, because without Mr. Michael Fox, we never would have been able to climb this mountain uh, as a board of trustees. He is our walking stick. He is the person who got us to the top. Uh, he is the individual who's our inspiration. Uh, he's our enlightenment. And he's our experience. 
and he is the person who is going to uh, lead this forward, and I think he ought to be recognized for that. We're just thrilled to have him on board, and I want to mention that on behalf of the Board of uh, Trustees. And I look forward, I look forward very much to the opening of this museum and looking up inside that opening door and seeing all of your names on that bronze plaque. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman O'Hearn. Next is uh, Abe Hayes, followed by John Stewart. Good evening, Mayor Lane and members of the Scottsdale City Council. My name is Abe Hayes, and I have been the owner of a Scottsdale Gallery, Arizona West Galleries at 7149 Main Street for roughly 37, 38 years. As a trustee of the museum board, it has been my seminal role to help find and identify important art, artifact, and literary collections and collectors, some of whom I've known and many of whom are new to me. The main requirements and factors for these collections are historical accuracy and truth and their quality, reverence, and importance to Western culture. It's relatively simple, the way to success. The objects, whether art or artifacts or books, must have originality and significance and the books, pamphlets, auction catalogs, magazines, bibliographies, etc., will contain knowledge and understanding for, for our exhibitry. They'll put things in context, which is terribly important to the understanding of what we will be doing. My wife, Lyle, and I have enjoyed many years here with the valuable experiences and some success due to public and private business activities. We are certainly very eager for the opportunity to provide historical objects to Scottsdale's Museum of the West, and our expectations for its success are very high, and our commitment will be very extensive. It is obviously important to all of us to help maintain and certainly improve Scottsdale's reputation in the field of the arts, both regionally, nationally, and internationally. In doing so, we want to aid all of the business community as well as the schools and other relationships so important to a community. It will be important to all of us to help maintain and improve Scottsdale's reputation. Many of us will give a great deal back to both the city, the state, and the region, and will be only be doing what is right and very appropriate. Hopefully, all residents and visitors, especially the young, can be entertained and educated far into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hayes. John Stewart, followed by Scott Jones. Good, good evening. I'm uh, John Stewart, and my wife and I have a home at 6651 East Cactus Wren Road in Paradise Valley. I have the uh, honor of having served with Jim Bruner at an earlier itineration of the Flasher Museum in Scottsdale, which did not come to pass, unfortunately. But I'd like to make three quick points. Point number one, I think it is appropriate that city funds be used as a catalyst for private enterprise in the advancement of the arts. And a tax-exempt institution, as is proposed here, uh, would indicate that I think this concept can work and should work. And number two, 
Let us remember that Hollywood's been telling the story of the West for over 75 years. They've made millions of dollars doing it. And with the, with the help of Mr. Mike Fox and all the people he has put together on the board, I think that's quite a doable task. And number three, if we all have the courage of our convictions, I believe we can make a compelling and interesting story of the West. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. <coughs> Scott Jones and then Mr. Paul Messenger. Mr. Mayor and Council, hi, I'm Scott Jones. I'm the general manager of Legacy Gallery on the corner of Scottsdale Road and Main Street. Uh, the owners of the gallery are stuck in a snowstorm. Thank goodness. Yes, it snowed this week, but nothing compared to what happens in Wyoming. Uh, I was asked to come and just extend our support uh, to this project. As a side, this afternoon I had three young ladies in the gallery, 10 years old, in their charter uniforms, sitting on the floor by paintings. And I'll have to admit, I loved it. I love having kids in the gallery. And I, sat, I kneeled down beside each one of them as we wrote reports. That's what I see this project doing for the future. And by so doing benefits the businesses here in town for generations to come. Uh, I owned a business here in Scottsdale or in Phoenix a long time ago. And I treasured planning plant visits around art shows at Legacy Gallery, Trailside, and other spots here in the Arts District, and taking my kids to Old Town. I think all I want to say is this project is part of something that I think will be an incredible legacy uh, to generations to come, and we support it. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Mr. Messenger. Followed by Orm Lewis. Good evening, <coughs> council members, mayor, uh, Paul Messenger, 11,060 North 94th Street. Almost everything that uh, needed to be said, I think, has been said, but I'd like to mention one or two things. Scottsdale. Uh, is a national center of Western art. Uh, our galleries show some of the finest Western art in, in the world. A great percentage of Western art that we show was painted or sculpted within 500 miles of here. Uh, it is truly part of our native heritage. Uh, shouldn't we display it here and shouldn't we tell the stories that are here? Uh, another point that, that I thought might be mentioned uh, is that today there are no Western art museums in the valley, no museums dedicated to Western art. Uh, Scottsdale is uh, uh, re report, uh, reputed to be the uh, uh, west most western town. Uh, this should be the place. Scottsdale down, Scottsdale's downtown has not been upgraded or changed a great deal in recent years. Uh, and this will uh, provide uh, a good returns. Uh, if, it, if this investment is made in the downtown, it will provide great returns uh, uh, back to the city, back to the city in, in forms of sales, sales and property tax, greater values, uh, business activity in the, in the downtown community, a more interesting old town, and a wonderful western experience for our visitors uh, while offering expanded cultural experience uh, for our citizens, it also will be a place of education of, of their own community for youth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Messenger. I should also say uh, another former councilman. Orm Lewis. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor, um, Council members. Um, very briefly, everything has been said that I could say. I guess I'm, I'm, I live outside of Scottsdale, 4325 East Palo Verde Drive in Phoenix. Nonetheless, 
My recollection involvement in Scottsdale goes back to 1947 when I was enrolled in Scottsdale Grammar School, suffered through the World War II barracks that were moved onto that site, and I've been involved in the art community um, through my family and through uh, myself um, for 60 years. And with the board and our dedication, I will assure you that we, you will see the fulfillment and the visitor's will of, of a museum that is inspiring, is interactive, and is fun. And let's get with the cause, and thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Dan Simichuk, uh, followed by Dewey Shadi. Mayor Lane, good people of the council, I'm, I'm Dan Simonchuk. Uh, my wife uh, and I have lived at Scottsdale for almost 30 years. Um, we live just south of downtown and I spend my days in downtown. Um, I have office out of a little coffee shop on Fifth Avenue in Cra uh, Craftsman's Court. Um, um, I'm going to read um, something here, uh, bear, bear with me, stick with me. Um, this is an excerpt from an article uh, from the Arizona Republic uh, dated December 17, 2012, uh, entitled Cactus League Economic Benefits Up, Continue Year-Round. Cactus League baseball and year-round use of its ballparks and training facilities add an estimated $632 million, $632 million to the Arizona economy uh, according to a study released Monday by the Cactus League Baseball Association. The study found that 56% of the 1.7 million fans attending games this past spring were out-of-state visitors, and the median stay in Metro Phoenix was 5.3 nights. Spring training accounted for $422 million in economic impact in 2012, up 36% from the previous study in 2007. In a related study, the first of its kind, uh, estimated that use of 10 Cactus League ballparks and 15 baseball training complexes boosted the local economy by $210 million. That included community events and festivals. This is a quote. Uh, spring training pumps are economic tires each spring, uh, said Mark Coronado, association president. But these studies confirm that the economic benefits continue all year long, end quote. So we know that downtown businesses currently are prospering uh, this time of the year uh, because of, of baseball, because of spring, uh, spring training. Locals and visitors alike come to downtown Scottsdale for a great baseball experience, and they spend a lot of money. We know that baseball has a rich, rich history in Scottsdale and has appealed to a broad demographic over many, many generations. It will continue to have broad appeal for many generations to come. So from a relevancy, sustainability, economic impact, and return on investment standpoint, um, if we are proposing to appropriate funds to a Museum of the West, which I'm sure is, is going to be wonderful, uh, why not uh, appropriate funds to a Cooper, Cooperstown West, um, a baseball or a spring training uh, museum? Um, I would encourage you to pull downtown stakeholders to, uh, to determine uh, which, which project might be most relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simichuk. Uh, Mr. Dewey Shoddy, followed by, and finally, uh, Gordon Dudley. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, good evening. My name is Dewey Shoddy. I've been a uh, resident of Arizona for 40 years, of Scottsdale for 36 years, and an owner of uh, commercial property in downtown Scottsdale. Uh, for some 33 years. And matter of fact, my uh, small commercial centers are in walking distance of the Museum of the West, or where it will be. Um, <clears throat> I must say to you, I'm a, a fervent supporter of the arts and culture in our city and everything that that contributes not only to the economic vitality of our city, but to the to the uh, cultural well-being and uh, to to life in our city. Uh, this museum will take its place along with the Scottsdale Center for the Arts and the Solari 
uh, project at Scottsdale and Camelback Road as an iconic cultural event that people will want to go to and to uh, participate. Um, if the citizens of um, Scottsdale need to be wonder about the vitality and the viability of this project, they only need to look at the people, the organizers who have been behind this project from, from the beginning. They are fiscally responsible people. They have the highest credibility and integrity that our city can offer. And even though I've been here four decades, I feel like a virtual newcomer tonight when I see the support for this project. Uh, many of them that spoke before me, you know them well. Uh, and the people of Scottsdale can be very confident that this, this will be a project of the highest caliber and quality. And so I urge your support of it wholeheartedly. Thank you, Mr. Shadi. Uh, Gordon Dudley. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Gordon Dudley. I reside at 8242 East Redfield. The last time I attended a function here at the City Council regarding the Museum of the West, some things were said that I did not agree with, but because I didn't submit one of those white cards ahead of time, I was unable to correct the record. Uh, to prevent such an unfortunate calamity from reoccurring, I submitted my card this time. I'm happy to report, however, that I detected nothing that I needed to come up here and controvert. But while I'm up here, <laughs> I think that I would like to say that um, my wife's father opened a bookstore in downtown Scottsdale in 1964. Uh, it was a bookstore that specialized in books on the American West and the American Civil War. And he's fond of telling the story of how he was greeted by the local merchants who came in and inquired as to what they were doing and uh, what kind of business they were going to operate. When they told them they were going to operate a bookstore uh, about the West, they said good luck, and as they walked out the door, it was next to what is now May Lee's on Main Street, they heard them say, they won't last six months. The bookstore is now in its 48th year of operation, and when he passed away a couple of years ago, my wife took over the bookstore, and we made a substantial investment in the store and in downtown Scottsdale. We purchased a building at the corner, the southeast corner of 2nd Street and Marshall, which is catty corner from where the proposed Museum of the West is going to be. Uh, we expanded the space and we continued to operate the bookstore out of that facility. My wife and I are very active in his historical uh, events around Phoenix. We're both members of the board of directors of the Arizona History Convention, which puts on an annual convention to celebrate Arizona history in one of the communities in Arizona every year. And I'd just like to say that we're ecstatic that the Museum of the West is finally looks like it's reaching critical mass and it's going to get off the ground and this facility is going to be built. We think it's going to be a great benefit to downtown Scottsdale and it's going to extend some of the business community a little bit south of Main Street. There's not much south of Main Street. We're down there. There's a couple of new businesses and restaurants that are in that area. I think this is going to be a great complement to that. We have people from all over the world that come into Scottsdale and they come to our little shop because they're interested in the Wild West and the American Civil War, which we also specialize. And I think that the Museum of the West, being in that location, is just going to be great for downtown Scottsdale. And we encourage your approval of the two items on the agenda this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dudley. Uh, that completes the public testimony on this. And uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, participating and uh, giving the, the views and thoughts uh, on, this, uh, on this project. Uh, I would just say that this is something that uh, I believe, as uh, Ned O'Hearn quoted me as saying, is a graceful growth in downtown, and I think it's a, it's a wonderful project. And, and frankly, the perseverance of this group of men and women who have been behind this for as many years as I can remember uh, to bring this forward, I think, is really so admirable. And, 
And it also speaks volumes to the, just <laughs> exactly the very thing that we're here to decide, and that is how do we use, in this particular case, tourism funds in a self-sustaining effort to enhance our Scottsdale experience and to serve to educate our residents and our tourists about our Western heritage. I think that's said by a number of folks. And I think that's a, it's not only a wonderful endeavor, but it's also worthy of, of uh, this kind of investment, I believe. You know, and as we watched, literally, and this was also said in another way, the who's who of Scottsdale come forward, former council people and former state legislators, and frankly, uh, those as close to our founders as we can have in this town at this day and age, uh, coming forward with a, a true acknowledgement of their commitment and their desire, and as I said before, they're, they're just their true perseverance in, in bringing this forward to this point in time. And we do have at hand a mechanism. It's something we... Uh, we actually put on the ballot in 2010 and was voted by the general population to use of uh, some tourism bed tax dollars in order to use those funds to serve on debt for capital infrastructure, for tourism capital infrastructure. And I think this is a qualifying venture, and it's one of the things that we've been working on probably more ardently over the last couple of years, as uh, I think everybody will admit I would probably want to insert really at this point in time, really, a, there is a, a great deal of thanks that's due to the staff for working uh, in a positive sense, moving things forward uh, to try to come to that uh, area of things where we can, in representing the general population here in Scottsdale, can feel confident that we have something that's working forward and we have a group of people who are behind it in the community and the staff working in I think a, a can-do kind of environment, how they can facilitate and make this work, and at the same time to everybody's satisfaction and I think everyone's security. Certainly we've got a, a contract here that serves certainly to preserve and to protect the city and the participants on both sides. So I think that, uh, and it's a performance uh, rated uh, type of contract and it will address, I believe, uh, those areas of concern as to how we move along as we go forward. I would just want to add at this point in time, I am a supporter of this, and there are a couple of issues that are sort of stand in question, and uh, there's been a fair amount of conversation as to how we would handle uh, and how we would assist uh, to assure the operating results and, and, and particularly in those startup years of the $400,000 in matching funds over five years or a $2 million commitment to match, I think that uh, it makes altogether good sense that we use the carryover funds. And this, if this is an answer to one of those issues, I think that it makes altogether good sense to use those carryover funds we have in cap tourism capital improvement in the special revenue funds uh, to set those aside to fulfill that obligation from the city's standpoint. The other uh, question mark, I suppose, well, within that category, and it's something we explored in the Economic Development uh, Subcommittee, uh, and that was whether or not we would set here on the council and, and the city, whether we would set some criteria within the uh, spectrum of the size of donations being matched, a minimum and a maximum. When I asked the question whether that would in any way inhibit uh, donors or the ability for the, uh, the board to be able to assemble those funds, I, I don't believe I got any, any sense that that was a problem, and in fact it may have had some positive attributes. And since that's the way the contract's written, even though I would have thought that uh, dollars are dollars, matching them to whomever, to whatever extent, was, was fine, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to see that provision stay there, uh, as long as that's... Uh, uh, I think workable on both ends, and it does not inhibit the ability to generate funds, and, and maybe possibly even in, it, uh, advances that. And, uh, the only other item is the uh, reserve fund. We have a pretty strong uh, reserve requirement on uh, one year's debt service requirements on uh, on any kind of MPC bond that we issue, and of course this is this 
his debt service through the special funds from the tourism infrastructure funds. Uh, I think that, too, is a reasonably good use, rather than to finance and pay again for it, uh, of those carryover funds. They're all that's, And in that case, it's particularly, it can be earmarked, and, of course, at, at the end of term, it would end up being returned to it. So it seems like an effective and good use, uh, particularly since those funds continue to accumulate in, the, in those capital accounts. Uh, we do have uh, one other item of, of certainly some small, and I don't know whether we want to throw that back up there at some point in time, but those changes to the contract that we want to make sure we stipulate on any kind of motion. But I support both, and I'd be happy to make that motion. Uh, but I, I think, in, in fairness, I do want to allow the rest of the council to, to weigh in as well. Uh, starting with Councilwoman Millhaven. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I do want to come back to some of what you talked about. The Treasurer said we should um, consider whether or not we want to change those qualified donations. Um, you alluded to it. But my understanding, and this is, I guess, for the museum folks, my understanding is you'd rather we not make any changes to the contract and just, you know, up or down the contract the way it is. Can I get somebody from the, the representing the museum to speak to that, maybe Mr. Fox or Mr. Berner? Mr. Mayor, Councilman Hillhaven, our board will accept whatever the council decides with respect to this. If I had my personal druthers, I would rather not have the $50,000 limitation. Our goal is to raise money, whether it's 49000 or 51000 So if you're asking for my preference, it would be that to perhaps use the alternate language that the city treasurer said. But we will accept either way. Okay. Because the other is the the for the match comes after the first full year, and I think you're going to need it more when you first open the doors. Then and so maybe mm -hmm. what we can do is revisit that and work mm -hmm. with you guys to come because we can uh, city attorney we can revise this contract under by mutual agreement in the future. Yep, that's correct, Council. Okay, so rather than work out those details, I would be agreeable to take off those conditions as mm -hmm. well, and I'd also like to, us to revisit sort of during what timing that match would be done. And so rather than work on that details tonight, uh, maybe that's something we can work on in the future um, to, to, to modify that to by mutual agreement. Okay, and then I do have another question. I heard Mr. Millar mention in his presentation that um, agreement was reached that because we know we're going to get to see this one more time when we award the construction contract and that the um the the music that that all of you have agreed um to um raising 50 percent of your startup costs to open the doors and that we wouldn't move forward with the construction yes. contract is that's correct yes mr mayor of council millhaven that is correct yeah, that gives me a lot of comfort because there's a clause in the contract in here that says if the city determines at any time that the manager lacks the financial or other capacity to perform its duties with respect to design, construction, and operation of the facility, um, blah, 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 that the city can terminate this agreement by notice to the manager. And that vagueness gives me a little bit of discomfort. I don't want us coming back in a, a little while and saying, what does financial capacity mean? And so if we can come to an agreement tonight that 50 percent of the, uh, the cost to open the displays or mount the displays is what we'd like to see to demonstrate um, the financial capacity of the group. I think that gives us a lot of comfort and, um, and addresses the vagueness in that. So, so thank you. Um, and because what we heard from the consultant earlier is, you know, the, the, the uh, operating uh, pro forma that we're looking at has 45 percent contributed revenue. That's what museums do. Um, and so that fundraising capacity is going to be important to the success. Of, so I'm so pleased to see that we've got a plan for uh, what kind of hurdles we'd like to make uh, hit before we um, move forward with construction. So thank you. Um, and I want to thank the staff as well. I think the... The, the work that you've done around the, with the consultant that we heard from tonight about the feasibility of the museum, I think that gives us great comfort to say this isn't just a hope and a prayer, um, but this is something that's really going to happen in our community, that this is, that this is something that we can have happen. And, and with the city's commitment tonight, I am so excited about the museum folks' ability to go and raise money. And then to speak even more broadly to this, you know, um, as 
people we think about, right, we talk about nurturing our mind, our body, and our soul. And as a community, I think we have a mind, a body, and a soul that needs to be nurtured. And so if we think about the mind, we think about the great schools we have in our community and the great libraries and the new libraries that we open. And if we think about the body of our community, we talk about the hiking trails and the bike paths and the parks and all the wonderful investments we've made um, in all of those things. And, and for me, when we think about the soul of a community, I think it's about arts and culture. And I think it's important because it, it, it asks us to think outside ourselves. It challenges us to reflect on who we are and who we want to be. And investment in this Museum of the West really speaks to the soul of our community and, and challenges us to be better. And so I am just so excited to be here tonight uh, and move forward with this Museum of the West. It just helps this be a, an even more special community. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Robbins. Thank you, Mayor. Well, it's an exciting night, and I'm glad to share it with all of you. I, uh, it, it's really neat to see some of the people here who spoke and who are in the audience. Um, you know, I grew up in awe of, and uh, you know, the Bruners and the Sabas and the Messengers and Myron Dival here came down from the Great White North to see us as well, and and the rest of you who've been so supportive of the arts for so long. And uh, it's an exciting time, and I'm glad to see that your efforts have paid off, and that we're just kind of taking the credit for it here. But you all put in the hard work and uh, and done the heavy lifting, so we really, really appreciate that. And um, I'm very supportive of this, and it's uh, it, it's neat that it's an investment in our downtown as well. Um, it's an investment in the culture of who we are and what we're about. Um, people talked about the education component, you know, in the future generations. Um, in the economic vitality of the area. So there's, there's so many great components to what this is and, and why we're doing this. So uh, I'm really excited to support that. And generally speaking, when you talk about the vibrancy of your community or, or the quality of the community, you know, it gets down to quality of life. And so this touches all those areas as well. And, and so um, that's exciting. And staff has done a fantastic job of putting this together. It's come a long way. And uh, thank you very much for that. Um, the financing side of this is is really uh, exciting to see it come back from bed tax. You know, so it's it's uh, primarily supported by tourists who come to town, and and then we get to we get to uh, benefit from those um, those expenditures in our city. So it, it's it's a great funding mechanism as well. So um, I'm going to make a motion. If that's okay, or do you want me to? Do you want to? Well, I don't know if you want to second my motion. Oh, sure. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah, I'd be happy to second your motion. With just let me just go through and make sure I understand what your motion was, okay. so that we're on the same page then. Um, so we are uh, going to do the the two million dollar carryover um, for the operating support. Correct. Um, we're not. I, I would uh, would like to see us not put any kind of constraints on the. Grant money, either the five thousand or the fifty thousand. I'd like to just leave that open. What was your? I, I sort of left it open to just to answer your question on that, and, and Linda weighed in on that as well. But nevertheless, uh, I, since I think the uh, the sense I'm getting now is that they would just assume not have that constraint on there. Right. I'd be fine to remove it. So, okay. So that's not. A, 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 there's no restraint on the matching funds. Um, and then I would, uh, are you suggesting as well, we, we look at this as two complementary projects, so we, we don't have to waive that policy. We're, we're saying this is a project and a half, so, okay. And then um, the $900,000, so we don't have to finance the reserve. We're taking the $900,000 reserve out of the carry forward. Right. Okay. And that's essentially just an earmark of Correct. those funds. And, oh, and then as well, you talked about the... Uh, the changes to the actual wording of the contract that were typographical errors. We're, right. we're changing that as well. If we want to go ahead and put them up, we can just, if we need to read them or if they can be referenced. So, Mr. City Attorney, did we cover? Yeah. Um, um, Mayor, if you just want to include the changes to uh, the paragraphs that have been uh, put up on the screen. You don't need to read them in the record. We'll, we'll all be clear on what they are. And, and that's what I initially said before, except they weren't up on the screen. But we will now reference the A and B, the, the changing in the language that was required there to be included in the motion. Then, thank you, Mayor. That's my second in my comments. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Cordy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what a special night. Um, and I want to thank uh, staff uh, for your hard work to put this uh, deal together. It has been um, a long road, um, and, and I know that. Um, I also want to thank, well, and to express uh, the fact that I'm, I'm very much honored to be in the same room with many of you. Um, I've known many of you um, years in your commitment and loyalty to this uh, community uh, called Scottsdale is um, a blessing, so thank you. Uh, certainly, uh, I am in support of this. Um, it um, is not only going to enhance our arts and culture, our soul, as uh, Council Member Millhaven has stated. Um, I think the location is perfect. Um, it's going to continue to support our vision for a very dynamic downtown. Uh, but most importantly, I think it, it parallels um, Scottsdale's values and vision, uh, particularly um, after our uh, visioning process with 100 residents of Scottsdale. Uh, these uh, values of integrity and creativity um, and um, celebrating uh, this Western culture is an important one to our community. So thank you for that. And thank you for carrying the flag. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Phillips. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have some comments to make, too, but I have a couple questions, and I guess um, the first couple would be to Mr. Bruner, if you have a minute. And, the, and they're really minor questions, but I want, uh, I want the public to understand this. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor Phillips. After all these years, I certainly have a couple more minutes. <laughs> Now, thank you for that. Um, do you have a monetary and art donors right now chomping at the bit waiting for us to drop the hammer on this? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Phillips, I'm not saying chopping the bits, but we have a significant number of people in the art district, the art galleries and foundations who have contributed money to us in the past with respect to the seed money that kept this thing going. Uh, the comment we were hearing Last couple of years, they weren't sure what the city's role would this would be. A uh, positive vote tonight would just work wonders in terms of going back to those people and tell them, yes, the city is committed to this. The city is putting bed tax funds in it, and uh, now we need your participation. But you don't have anybody right now that's saying, I, I can't wait to do this as soon as the city commits. We're going to. We have a c couple. We have one pledge already, but we would rather not disclose it. Okay. And the second question is, and maybe I'm misunderstanding this, this uh, the matching funds restraint. I think a couple of council people said that they would prefer no limit on that. And would that mean that if, let's say, some, some donor guy passed away and left his $10 million estate, does that mean the city has to match that $10 million? No, I don't think so. I think, that, as I recall, the, the language that is in the agreement that perhaps is being amended that we'd have if somebody gave a matching contribution, say, or gave a contribution of 100000 only 50 of it would qualify. Mm -hmm. Our feeling, my feeling, is money is money. If somebody wants to give us all 400 why not? Take that plus get additional monies. Right, but if they want to give you a million dollars, then does the city have to match that million dollars? No, no, I think the city's contribution is just to the 400 for the first five years. We'll, we'll be glad to take it if you'd like to give it, but we don't expect it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank you very much. You bet. And my next question for Mr. Smith, you, you said earlier when you were talking about the bed tax money that some folks wanted to use some of that money for the Desert Discovery Center. If we did this, would that take away any chance of funding for that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council and Councilman Phillips, um, the reference I made was that the Tourism Development Committee uh, which is the group of citizen advisors that you have on how to spend tourism dollars. They have had a presentation in the past from the Desert Discovery uh, proponents, and they put a reserve or an earmark, if you will, on one bed tax block of $600,000 in their mind that, <clears throat> that would be a, a support for that project. It did not... 
that presentation did not take the next step and come before council, so you all have not acted on that recommendation one way or the other. But uh, they felt it was important that I report to you that they, in their minds, have a reservation of one block, $600,000 of debt support for the Desert Discovery Center. And this isn't taking that away? It is, that is correct. Okay, that's what I want to know. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Vice Mayor Clark. Hey, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very Go ahead. much. Pardon me. Uh, excuse me for this, and I'm not meaning to be preaching to the choir, but I kind of have a list here of, of reasons for, for our 10 people watching tonight. Is that number 10, I think we need to get back to our roots, and I think this is the one way to do it. I think there's too many people in the city that want to get away from the Western and want to bring all the new modern things here and and don't like to talk about cowboys and Western art, and I've even heard some from some uh, civic leaders say that. So I think this is one way to get back to our roots. Uh, number, my, number nine, Mr. Smith, I think your creative financial genius is, is amazing and figuring out a way for us to, to work this through, and uh, I applaud you for that. Uh, number eight, another thing I like about this is it takes the focus off the entertainment district, which I think has been very negative for Scottsdale's downtown. Uh, number seven, I like this because the city owns it, and as the city owns it, the people own it, and I think that's a very good thing for Scottsdale. Uh, number six, takes away apartment space. I'm glad for that. Number five, uh, we talked earlier, it sounds like it plans to break even, which I think is better than most museums around the country, and that's a good thing for a museum. Um, number four, I, have, I haven't heard any negative comments tonight, and I'm kind of amazed at that because usually you get half and half or something. You know, I, I have a no, no emails, no phone calls. Nobody's saying this is a bad idea. We can't afford it. We don't want it. So how can you argue with that? Uh, number three, interest rates are low right now. I think it's a good time to be issuing bonds if we're going to be doing it at all. Number two, next to the arts districts, I mean, it's the perfect spot for it. I think it's going to help revitalize that area. And number one, it's obvious, gentlemen, over 30 years have done your due diligence. I've done a Colonel Mall model work, the long list of civic leaders. It, it just uh, blows my mind how much time and effort that you put into this. And uh, I actually feel honored to be able to be, be here, one, to be able to support it after all this time. So... Uh, with that, I'd like to say make us proud, and uh, don't forget to spell my name right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Pardon the, uh, the shortness, or I should say the interruption before. Uh, Vice Mayor Clapp. Well, I'll be brief because everybody has said a lot about this already. I'm very much in support of this project, and uh, in particular, I'm glad that it landed downtown. It was discussed to be moved other places over the last few years, but it ended up right back almost to the point where it began, and that's downtown. And that pleases me primarily because this is great for the galleries in the art district. Uh, this is this is what they need to help support what they're trying to do. It will bring more tourists and more residents into the galleries because it's going to create more interest in art in general. And while they're down there, they'll go and look at the galleries. And so I think this is an extremely important project to boost the, uh, the gallery district. There are magazines that recognize cities throughout the country for their arts um, uh, and um, their inclination to promote the arts as well as, as art in general. And I think that because we're going to have a, a museum down there that will deal with uh, you know, the Western art in particular, we do have another museum that's obviously modern art, uh, that is just going to enhance our reputation throughout the country as a, com as a community that comes together for promotion of the arts and that's going to be great for generating more tourism in, in Scottsdale, which is, takes us right back to where we started. We're using tourism dollars to create this museum, and we're going to bring more tourists in to spend more money. So it's a full circle, and I'm very happy that this is going to happen here in Scottsdale. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, 
Mr. Washburn, you have a uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. With your indulgence, uh, before you call for the vote, I'd just like to go through the motion to make sure that uh, staff is absolutely clear on what's uh, what, what what the council is voting on. Um, as I understand it, the motion is to approve um, the uh, management agreement, uh, the resolution adopting the management agreement, uh, with the language uh, changes to paragraph five as stated on the screen at this moment. Uh, also, with respect to the restrictions on the amount of um, uh, donation that can be counted towards the matching funds of $400,000 per year. Uh, you wish to strike the limitation on that. So that would mean that uh, Section 3.2.2.3.2, take my word for it on that one, um, uh, would be stricken. Um, also, uh, I understand that you intended to give direction to staff with respect to the $400,000 that it would be uh, derived from the um, uh, bed tax, the unreserved bed tax, is that the carryover balance of the bed tax each year. Um, and then also you intended to treat this as, uh, I think it was described as a project and a half, uh, so there would not be a need to waive uh, the um, financial policy restricting the allocation of uh, bed tax slices, um, uh, more than one bed tax slice to one project, which means that the um, provision in Ordinance Number 4071, Section 1, which is the Waiver of Financial Policy 21A, would be stricken from that ordinance. Is that correct, David? Yes. That is my understanding. Okay. And then uh, it, it was not clear to me, did you intend to waive or did you not intend to waive the financial policy that requires the uh, reserve? No, not to waive it, but to... Uh well, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how it would be intended, but it would be to replace that reserve uh, from a financing standpoint with the set aside, or rather the carryover funds to the tune of the, uh, I believe it's $900,000. And Mr. Mayor, that's correct. It's 900000 of reserve that would be required. Um, and it would be and it would earmarked. Come, it, well, actually, it's not earmarked in that case. It actually moves from the Special Tourism Fund to the Debt Reserve Fund until the termination of the debt, and then it would come back. So that one actually moves. The $2 okay. million dollars is earmarked. So, Perfect. Yeah. Mr. Smith, in order to accomplish the, what, what the mayor is uh, putting in the motion, would we need to waive policy 37, or we would not need to waive policy 37? No, you do not need to waive policy okay. 37, because you will now be establishing the reserve as uh, stipulated in financial policy number 37. Okay. In which case, then, the, the two waivers that are in ordinance number 4071, neither one of those is required. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So then basically the motion is not to approve ordinance number 4071 because that had the two policy waivers in it, and we've now established that the intention is not to waive either of those policies. Um, and then I would also like, since we're changing an, uh, an agreement that has already been executed by Mr. Fox, I'd just like Mr. Fox to confirm that he has the, 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 we have his authorization to change the agreement that he's already signed and that he has the authority from, his, from the uh, uh, board to uh, grant that um, permission. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Pretty official, but thank you very much, Mr. Washburn, for clarifying all of that. I, there was a little light on that, but thank you. Uh, seeing that we have uh, no further comments to be made, and the motion is on the table and has been seconded and clarified, again, thank you for that. Uh, I think we're now ready to vote. All those in favor of the agreement as it's been stipulated by the motion, please indicate uh, in, the, uh, in the motions and resolutions. Uh, please indicate by aye, if you, aye, and nay if you oppose. Uh, it's unanimous, 7 0. Thank you all very, very much for all the work into getting to this point, and thank you for your commitment and, and your sacrifice of time and effort to this point in time. So let's move on and get it done. So thank you very much. Oh. You're right. We didn't. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I actually had... Uh, uh, Mr. Washburn, we had, uh, <laughs> before everybody gets unsettled, uh, I had intended to include 18 in this, but I know in your clarification, 
Right. You, you, had not, you had not addressed that, so I assume we were going to come back and okay. catch that one. Well, if everybody wants to resume, take their seats. <laughs> well, I will, I will make the motion uh, on, the, on item 18, and that is to adopt resolution 9285. And, Second. and seconded. Unless there's any further comment on that particular one, uh, we're ready for a vote. <laughs> All those in favor, please indicate by aye. 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 Those opposed with an A. Uh, uh, Guy, are you voting on this? Okay, thanks. Okay, unanimous uh, on that as well, on 18. Pre construction. Thanks, Linda. <laughs> 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 After all that, right? We've got to get it all done. <laughs>